Okay, now here we talk about to build up relations, uh, the lifestyle, the essential qualities of people who serve God. It's very important that that we have this, you know, that uh, when we raise up people, when we raise up people to serve God, it's very important that we know what qualities we want them to have and what actually what the Bible wants them to have. And also, as pastors who are serving now, it's very important um, what qualities we have now. First is relationship with God, that we always stay in Him, John 15, 5. He who abides in Jesus and He in us, then will bear much fruit. Because Jesus is full of the life qualities, the nature of God. Uh, he is God. So when He lives in us, His nature will come out. So it's very important that we don't serve with human power, but with God's power. Now, I have met a number of pastors who said that they are tired, they are burned out. Because very often people don't depend on God. It's just a knowledge of Jesus Christ. Just the biblical knowledge. But we need the relationship so that it's Jesus living through us. That Jesus putting His zeal into us. That we want to serve God and bless people. Okay, and then uh, Isaiah 58, 14. Then you shall delight yourself in the Lord and I will cause you to ride on the heights of the earth. So here it promises us that when we come to the Lord, here it talks about what kind of relationship we have. It's a relationship of delighting ourselves in God, that we delight in God, we like God. Now many people don't have these elements in the prayer. They just say, God help me in my ministry, help me in my family, provide for me. It's asking. But the Bible says, delight yourself in God. And then, and then He will respond and fulfill um, met the needs of our uh, our prayers and also here uh, what I mean is that uh, that he will give to us what we ask for and then here is in this passage it says that when we delight ourselves in the Lord he will cause us to ride on the heights of the earth that it will go higher and higher that we that we uh, will have the elevation from God God, is, God wants us to be happy with Him, to be thankful to Him, to appreciate Him, to like Him. And then, when we are like that, then our heart is open and God can live in our heart. And then, have strength from God's love and joy. Now many, I have seen many pastors who live in the law. It's always telling people, you have to do this, you have to do that, you didn't do it. It's motivation from the law. But the Bible says, Psalm 90, 14, Oh, satisfy us early with your mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. So it's the love of God that fills us so that we can rejoice and we have the joy of the Lord coming through us. And also, uh, be good and faithful servant means that it's not just faithful doing things, but be good servants, be uh, servants who are nice to people. So Matthew 25, 21, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. So Jesus want to look at two qualities. First is the goodness, the, the kindness, <coughs> the kindness in our nature, the love in our nature, how we, are, how we love God and love people. And then we are faithful in doing what God wants us to do. And in John 21, 15, when Jesus appeared to the disciples uh, by the Sea of Tiberias, that he asked uh, Simon three times, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than this? And then Peter said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And then Jesus said, feed my lambs. That Jesus asked him three times because Jesus wants us to serve God to be sure that we love God first. Now, if we think of Nowadays, it might be very strange. If a teacher asks you uh, in front of other people, do you love me more than these things? You say, teacher, why do you ask me, do I love you? Now, in, all, in our daily life, we don't ask that from people.
But Jesus, God is different. God is a God of love. He wants people to love Him first before we serve Him and, and feed His lambs. So he is, Jesus was not shy to ask Peter in front of the other disciples, Do you love me more than this? Because Jesus wants to make sure everyone loves Him first before we serve Him. When we love Him, then we have the strength and we appreciate God and then God can work in our life. And then also it's very important that we want to obey God. In Matthew 7, 21 to 23, it talks about there are people who says, Lord, Lord, and will not enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. And on that day, there are many people who have served God. They say what? What does the Bible verse say in 22? Have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many, many miracles? So there are people who prophesy and cast out demons and done many wonders. But still, Jesus said, it's because you don't obey me in your life. So it's very important that we have the relationship with God and we obey God in our life. And we love God and obey Him. And then those who don't have a, relation, don't have a relationship with God and don't obey God, they are cast into the outer darkness that Jesus said, I never knew you. So these people would not have salvation. Okay, and then the personal qualities of people who serve God. Personal qualities. What personal qualities do we want to have? First is humility. Now John the Baptist, some people said, you know, Jesus baptized more people than you. And then uh, many people would say, wow, then I'm not happy. But John the Baptist said, he must increase, but I must decrease. This is very, you know, uh, extraordinary. Because most people want to be recognized. They want to go higher. But John the Baptist said, he, he must de increase and I must decrease. That when I decrease, then God can do more things. So when I decrease, God can do more things. But when I increase, I can block God's work. When a lot of people, when they are raised up to a high level, they can block God's work. So in our life, it's very important that we say, Lord, I trust in you only. Let your will be done. Your name be glorified. I just trust in you, relax in you, and I let you be exalted. I glorify your name. And then pursue holiness in 2 Timothy 2.20. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. It's very important that we have a holy life. We cannot be perfect, but every time we sin, we ask God to for forgiveness and then we pursue holiness. Holiness first is the relationship with God. Holiness is, means separated for God. It's like the vessels in the temple, they are separated for God that we are, our life is for God. So the first thing is we dedicate our life to God and then we don't want to uh, live in sins and we don't want to live in lust or anger or controlling behavior or, or, or frustration. We don't want to live in that kind of sin. We don't want to live in any kind of sins. When we live in sin, it would destroy our our life and our ministry. So it's very important that we live as vessels of honor, that we glorify God, that we have a sanctified life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then um, the next quality is that we cast the burdens of Jesus. I'm sorry. Okay, cast the burdens to Jesus. I'm sorry, it's correct there. That all our burdens given to Jesus. And we serve joyfully and learn to be gentle and humble like Jesus. So the quality, I have seen many nervous, tense, and uh, pastors who are under pressure. But Jesus wants us to be without burdens. He, he said in Matthew 11, 28, First come to me, and you'll find rest. And then take your yoke upon my yoke upon you. Take 
My yoke means to serve with me. Serve with me and learn from me. The yoke is on the neck, the shoulder of a cow, uh, an ox to pull the plow. And so Jesus has the yoke and we take the yoke together with Jesus. So take the yoke with Him and then learn from Him. Learn His qualities. So very important that we took His yoke, do His responsibility, but we learn from Him. And what do we learn? That He is gentle and lowly. That He is gentle and humble. That He is gentle. He is He's not rough. He's not controlling. And He's humble to serve people. And then we'll find rest for our souls. And then, now, there are two rests here. First rest is uh, when people come to Jesus. And the second rest is when we take Jesus' yoke and learn from Jesus. Now, many people take Jesus' yoke, but they don't learn from Jesus. They don't learn the quality of humility and peace from Jesus. We want to learn the peace and the humility from Jesus the gentleness from Jesus. And then we'll find rest. The rest will go into our soul. Jesus' yoke is easy because when we stay close to Him, He will help us all the way. It's not hard at all because Jesus will do great things. And, and then another quality is that we are able to feel and understand people. Um, I have noticed a number of pastors when they preach, they don't talk about the feelings of people, the needs of the people, the condition of the people, because they are just, you know, like teaching above the level of the people. They don't understand the people. So as pastor, we need to understand the need of the people. We understand the feeling of the people. Sometimes I've seen condition like this, uh, a member who is weak, who has sins, who have problems, or who have sadness in the family. And the pastor just talk to them and say, you have to repent, you have to obey, you have to do this and do that. It's always telling them what to do. But as pastors, we should learn to be like Jesus. Like Jesus, when Peter was about to deny Jesus, Jesus did not say, Peter, you know, tonight you're going to deny me. And how can that be? Why do you want to deny me? Jesus did not say that. But Jesus said what? He said, I pray for you so that you will not lose your faith. And when you turn back, uh, take care of your brothers, strengthen your brothers. So Jesus did not say, why did you deny me? You're going to deny me three times, but why do you want to deny me? Jesus did not say that. Jesus just said, I pray for you so that you will not lose your faith. So we too, when we see people weak, we'll listen to them, we'll understand them and help them. It doesn't mean we accept that they are always sinful. We accept that at this point they are weak. So we want to understand them and feel their feelings and respond to their needs, to their feelings and, I, and then say, yes, I know that it's hard for you. I know that at this point it's very hard to overcome it. And, but Jesus knows your need and I know your need and I want to help you. And Jesus is kind to help you. That way people know that we understand them. When we preach, we want to preach in a way that people feel that we understand the situation because we want to preach from our application of the Bible. It's not just from the Bible. It's not just from the Bible. Forgive. Forgive is just from the Bible. But we say it's hard to forgive people because we've been hurt by them. But when we think about the people who hurt, have hurt us, they have been hurt by other people. They have felt very sad. They have cried many times. So we understand they have this situation. So we have compassion on them and un have compassion on them and understand them and accept them. And then we can forgive them. So this is from my own experience, how to forgive people. When I understand that people are living in pain, people are suffering, and then I understand them and then I can accept them and I can forgive them. So we want to learn to understand people. It's very important. Now, where did we learn to understand people? First, maybe from our spouse. Pastors listen to your wife and your wife will tell you a lot of feelings. Uh, some pastors will say, wives, just shut up, listen to me. And, uh, but, you know, the Bible talks about mutual submission. 
that we submit to each other. So we also want to listen to the wife because the wife has uh, another perspective for us to understand the people. So we want to learn from Romans 12, 15, rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. So when people rejoice, we are happy with them. I'm happy that you are successful in this. You have done this thing. I'm happy that you have served God. You have loved God. I'm happy for you. And also weep with those who weep. That at least we feel sad. Oh, this person has gone through this. It's very difficult for him. I, I, that we want to develop a compassion. Yes, if I were in your situation, if I were you, I would feel very sad. If my family has this problem, I would feel very sad. So we want to feel and understand people and be a good listener. James 1.19 So then, my beloved brother, let every one man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. So be able to listen to people. First, listen to their different opinions and find out why people have different opinions and handle with fairness. Sometimes some Christians can only accept one point of view. We want to find out why people think differently, why they have different point of view before we can help them. And then third, need, listen to the needs and hurts of people and express empathy and feel the feelings and express empathy for them. Now one time I've uh, talked with a pastor about counseling and the pastor said, I don't believe in counseling. I believe in teaching only, just teaching the people. And I told him what is counseling and I would talk about counseling in another session. Counseling is like this, like if the person is at this level and we want them to go to this higher level. Teaching is like this, okay, repent, forgive, be nice to the people, love them, help them, do evangelism. But this person says, I'm not there yet. I, I have a problem with my relationship with God. I cannot do all these things. So how can we help this person from this stage to that stage that needs counseling? So how can we, how can we do that? The way to do it is like this. Okay, let me listen to you. He, tell me, what, uh, how do you, what do you think about God now? How, what's the relationship with God? So what do you find difficult for you to relate to God now? So we hear from them. And then we guide them to go step by step. The first step may be for them to understand the goodness of God in nature, in the food He created, that He created a wonderful body for you. So from the obvious things, to lead them to understand God's goodness. And then gradually, if someone is so nice to you and prepares so much food, are you willing to thank Him? So thank Jesus. When you thank Jesus, are you willing to love Him? When you love Him, are you willing to do things that please Him? When you are willing, willing to do something to please Him, are you willing to put down something that offends Jesus, like sins? So gradually guide a person and ask questions instead of teaching. Ask questions. Uh, what is bothering you? Uh, what is difficult for your relationship with your spouse? Uh, why is it difficult to communicate? What do you, where do you think the problem comes from? And uh, how can you overcome it? Uh, what are some possible ways? Do you think it will work? So these are questions to guide them. And then we want to listen to understand the needs. It's very difficult. It's not easy to understand people, to understand the different perspective, because it's easy for us to view people from our own perspective. So it's very important for pastors to learn, <clears throat> to listen, <clears throat> To listen to people and understand where they are and understand the difficulties and accept, I know it's difficult for you. Now for us it's not difficult, but we say, I know it's difficult for you. I know it's hard for you suddenly to forgive. And so can we go step by step, one step at a time. You pray the, for the person the first step, is that okay? And then listen to the person, is it possible for you to pray for the person? Is it possible for you to understand the person has been hurt many times? So to guide a person and understand his difficulties. Now sometimes when we listen to our spouse or to members, when they talk about problems, very quickly we give them answers. Instead we can ask them, uh, you have this problem with your spouse, uh, how do you feel? Now people don't ask questions like this. They think this is useless. I want to tell him what to do, not how he feels. But when he has a lot of anger, 
He has a lot of hurt feelings. We just tell them to forgive. It's very hard. So we need to understand the feelings. And we say, I understand your feelings. You know, when God speaks to us, He first understands our feelings and cares about our feelings. Jesus said to the woman healed of the 12-year bleeding, He said to her, Daughter, take heart. That means relax, don't worry. And He said, Daughter, because He regards each one of us as children, His son and daughter. So God is like that. God is uh, care about our feeling, care about respond to our feeling first before he change our life so we need to learn this this is very important and it's not easy to learn one way to learn is to ask your spouse did i listen to you how can i listen to you better and you can ask your spouse um, tell me something and then see if i understand you see if i respond to a way that makes you happy and after we hear what the spouse says, and then we we'll say, let me say what you said just now. See if I got what you said. This is a good exercise for listening. Uh, some people, they, it's very, very difficult to listen because they just, in the whole lifetime, they, when they listen, they think of how to answer the question, how to teach the person. So I hope this is something, you know, I spend some time on this. I hope we can it will stick in our mind that we need to listen to people and understand the feeling when someone says ah uh, i feel heavy immediately we try to feel the person's feeling he feels heavy what kind of heaviness we can ask what kind of uh, what kind of heaviness how do you feel now so we can ask the person and then when the person says my family has this fights I feel very unhappy and then we try to feel if I'm that person if I'm very unhappy the family has a lot of problem how do I feel so we want to want to feel the feelings of the person to understand that yes when people have difficulties they will feel sad and worried even though as with as time goes on they should learn to put down the burdens and trust in Jesus but now they're not there yet so we need to help them to be able to uh, to let them know we did hear them, okay? And then qualities as a shepherd. Go to serve and not to be served. Matthew 20, 28. There it says that the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give His life a ransom for many. So we come to help the poor and the needy and the weak. When we see a little child, when we see someone poor, someone weak, we don't say, uh, someone else will take care of you but we'll try to help of course we cannot help everyone but we try to help whoever is in front of us sometimes we have to dedicate to someone to help the person but we show them we respect them we honor them we want to help them so this attitude of serving people serving God is very important Willing to serve any unimportant person. That Matthew 25, 40, Jesus said, You did it to one of the least of these, my brethren. You did it to me. So it's the least one, the most unimportant one, a weak person, a sick person, a person who has emotional problem, that we're willing to serve such a person, care about the person, and don't think that he's not important. We need to believe that every person is important. And when we do it to them, we are doing it to Jesus. And accepting people, even when they are sinning. First, accept people when, when they have weakness or sins. Excuse me. Okay. So accept people even when they have weaknesses or sins. Now, it doesn't mean that we say sins are no problem. We say that sins are serious, but when they are sinning, they are weak. We still love them. We don't say, wait until you are holy and then I love you. But we love them when they are sinning. We love them. We care for them. And then accept that they are important and worthy to be loved. They are important. They are worthy to be loved. And look for their strengths, even when they have obvious weaknesses. People who are weak, they also have the strengths. They have the uh, gifts that God has given them 
and then show them love instead of criticism so don't just criticize for instance if someone serves with us we don't just say you didn't do this well you didn't do that well but instead we say I appreciate what you've done you've done this it's good now we can try to uh, sometimes if they're doing something not so good we need to talk with them but every time I talk to people about improving I make sure that I encourage them and say I like what you do you're doing well and then uh, and then I will tell them uh, can I can I uh, tell you something and I uh, a, a reminder to you that I encourage you to pay attention to or I can ask them uh, what do you think why do you think you did that and so even when we try to help the person to overcome some problem we do it with gentleness at the same time we appreciate the person and then help them to overcome the sins and weakness out of love not with pressure okay shepherd willingly honestly and eagerly not to be controlling first peter 5 2 shepherd of the flock shepherd the flock by of god which is among you serving as overseers not by compulsion but willingly not by force not by compulsion not forcing them but willingly not for dishonest gain but eagerly not for our own gain for money or for anything but eagerly that out of a willing heart I'm willing to serve I'm happy to serve for instance why am I doing this uh, to brothers in Africa I do it willingly but it takes a lot of work but I still do it eagerly because uh, I'm happy to serve God and happy to serve you all I'm happy to bless anyone and then verse 3 not as being lords over those entrusted to you not as masters but being examples to the flock not as masters controlling them 5 verse 5 likewise you young people submit yourself to your elders so the younger one uh, the church members should submit to the lead leaders the elders the pastors yet all of you be submissive to one another now notice this the members should submit to the leaders but everyone should submit be submissive to one another that means pastor also submit to the members what does that mean when members say we have such a need we have such a problem can you help me then the leader will be willing to submit to that need and help the person and listen if the members say to the pastor uh, we like to hear messages that relate to our life the pastor will listen and say okay uh, I try to do that can you tell me how I can do that better be humble in front of our member and submit to them when they suggest that we can preach to them in a way that meets the needs so pastors and leaders need to submit to the members also and then be clothed with humility that it's always we are humble and then in Ephesians 5 21 too, submitting to one another so in the Bible it's not just talk about everyone submit to one person now sometimes some pastors they say everyone submit to, to me every whatever I say to you do it and they think this is scriptural now it's true there is teaching on submission to the pastor but also there's teaching that the pastor should submit to the people too so the pa master is not the master the pastor is not the master he is the master servant he's the main servant and have mercy God's Jesus said I desire mercy that we have mercy upon people and think about their needs that we want to seek the people we want to save the people we want to help the people and go down to the level of the people like here the child the adult is willing to bend down so Paul said in 1st Corinthians 9 22 to the weak I became as weak that I might win the weak I have become all things to all men that I might by all means save some so to the weak I become meek what does that to the weak I become weak what does that mean that means if someone talk about his weakness we don't say I'm not like you I, I don't have those weaknesses but we can tell them I had those witnesses too I I, I try to overcome them I'm, them I thank God I have overcome some of the weaknesses I have but I still some from time to time I have some weaknesses that come up so let them know that we too have weaknesses that we have worked hard to overcome we 
are not without weaknesses, but God help us to overcome the weaknesses so I can help you now. And one day you can overcome these weaknesses with the help of God. And then willing to accept opinions and not stubborn. It's very important. There's so, I, I hope you don't mind me saying that, there are many leaders who say they're always right, that they don't listen to people. And in Proverbs 12, 15, it says, The way of a fool is right in his own eye, but he who heeds counsel is wise. Now, many people say, I'm not a fool. But here it says, the way of a fool is right in his eyes, that a fool thinks he's right. And then, he who heeds counsel, listen to counsel. That means everyone, even the wise people, listen to counsel. And then we are wise. So if members give such suggestions to us, we'll listen. It doesn't mean every time we listen. We obey. It doesn't mean every time we obey, but every time we listen, we listen to them. Is there, uh, is the idea workable? Now I have, my wife has helped me with this. Sometimes she said, uh, "Let's do this," and I said, "Well, that's too much time and too hard or whatever." And then she asked me, "How come sometimes I ask you to do something, you always say, you tell me the difficulties first. You don't tell me how come I have this wonderful thought." So I learned to pay attention to her ideas and, and, uh, and, and appreciate her wonderful thoughts. So she sometimes she told me, I have an idea. And I said, it must be a good idea. <laughs> so I said to her, and she feel good about that. Okay, now here is a picture, two pictures. Wrong, I'm never wrong. Someone says, I'm never wrong, then it's wrong. But another person says, I'm not always right. Hopefully we are many times we're right but still i'm not always right so as pastors as leaders we need to say that yes we're not always right we need to listen to our wife to our members and try to work on it admitting that we need to change something it doesn't mean we are weak admitting that we can change something means we are humble we are in a way like jesus jesus is humble to listen to the people, to help the people. So we are humble. We want to learn from Jesus to be humble. Okay, and then now we come to principles in ministry. Some important guidelines for behavior. First, don't gossip. Very important. Don't spread people's problems. If church workers discuss about the problem of a person now, church workers have to discuss in sometimes, sometimes, not always, but sometimes we need to discuss about a person. How can we help the person? Now, when we want to help the person, then it's not gossip. Gossip is trying to attack the person, talk about the bad things of the person to make other people dislike this person. But we don't want to make people dislike the person, so we're not gossiping. So when we discuss about a problem of a person, we just want to help. Then we want to help, then we want to keep the secrets within the group. We want to keep the secret. We don't want to spread to other members. Say, oh, this person has this problem. He has this problem. Uh, he has just committed this sins. That we need to be very careful because that's the biblical teaching that we should all keep secrets. Don't spread things about a person without a person's permission. And don't spread news about a person to defame the person, to make the person look bad. And then number two, don't compare different people and say, oh, he's, he loves God more than you. You're not like him. You, you don't love God. He, he loves God. You know, that way makes him feel very bad. It's like parents sometimes do it to children. Your, your elder brother is better than you. Your younger brother is better than you. Then it makes the other person very unhappy. <clears throat> number three, <clears throat> respect people. That they are honorable people in the sight of God. Even though they have weaknesses, they are still honorable people. Don't accuse or hurt them. Don't count. And, and the next thing is, oh, it should be our next point. So respect people. Don't hurt them. Don't accuse them. Don't say you're useless. You're always doing this. You always do things wrong. But try to lead them to first tell them the goodness and then lead them to repentance, lead them to improvement. And then don't counsel opposite sex in private. So be careful with people of the opposite sex. Don't be with them too much. And don't let them depend on us. Sometimes 
uh, some women uh, women have a, a stronger tendency of depending on someone on on a man and that way if we let them depend on us it can build up an unhealthy relationship so we need to be very careful and then the last uh, l number four let a group of people handle money so when there is money concern don't handle it ourselves but let other people handle it so that people will say uh, we didn't keep any money for ourselves and avoid traps that many pastors fall into money is one trap stealing money or mismanagement of money number two opposite sex reliance some females rely on the pastors or any kind of intimate relationship we don't want to have any kind of intimate relationship sometimes some some leaders have problem with their wife and then they would look for when they counsel women they feel satisfied they say my wife doesn't listen to me like that but this woman listen to me like that because the woman doesn't live with you when the wife live with us then there will be conflicts so we want to uh, be able to willing to handle problems with our wife so that the relationship is healthy that uh, with my wife I always communicate and build up the relationship and always make her feel happy now another day I will talk about uh, marriage and family relationship so we want to build up the relationship with the wife so that people other people cannot go into our relationship and I in my message I always talk about my wife so that people know that I have a good relationship with my wife so uh, no one can enter our relationship and then uh, family problems commanding a spouse like commanding a member now sometimes pastors say well in this church everyone listen to my command and they go home and they want to command their their wife now in the family it's not commanding so we need to understand that in the family we don't command each other but we care about each other we love each other that uh, we we want to have love instead of commanding relationship and then relationship with the members also shouldn't be controlling and should be uh, we should have love and should not have jealousy sometimes some members become very um, they do very well in ministry sometimes some pastors are jealous and they don't let them serve God much because they are afraid they might take the place so we need to be careful uh, not to have jealousy toward our members and then number five uh, bitterness in ministry that sometimes ministers have bitterness because people have hurt them hurt them so they feel very unhappy they they have anger and frustration and then number six comparison with other uh, ministers that we should not compare with that minister that minister has so many members that church has so many members and the members should not compare the pastor with another pastor and number seven trying to get attention and support now sometimes even leaders and pastors want to get attention uh, did I do uh, didn't I do so uh, well with you have haven't I been doing so well with you and trying to get the members to say yes you're doing very well uh, we want to get the praise from God if people give us praise we thank God and glorify God but we don't seek that and then number eight very important don't steal God's glory because if we pray for people and people experience God we want to say this is God's glory God is wonderful hallelujah praise God God is wonderful uh, give all glory to God is God who is working not me okay and then it's very important to build up the unity of the workers and members I've seen a number of churches that workers fight against each other that there is problem now sometimes the senior pastors say they have to all submit to me and everyone has to submit and then they find some problem with the senior pastor but they cannot tell him that way there is no unity because the the other workers just they cannot stand the pastor but they have no right I mean they cannot say anything so they they keep the mouth shut but they are unhappy so you know to keep the unity we need to be able to communicate and and tell each other what suggestion we might have so that we can serve better so that we can serving uh, more efficiently so it's very important that we keep this unity Amos 
three three can two walk together unless they are agreed if they don't agree then they cannot serve together efficiently and then Ephesians 4 2 with all lowliness and gentleness with long suffering bearing with un one another in love endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of love so in humble and gentleness and patience long suffering is patience bearing with one another that means if they have any problem weakness we bear with them uh, in love endeavoring trying to keep the unity in the spirit so in the bond of peace always have unity uh, this is something we need to teach everyone we keep this unity is very important we build up each other we encourage each other we appreciate each other and we when we agree on something we work on it together and before that we need to be able to communicate openly that people can say different opinions and ask God for guidance it's very important to ask God for guidance what is the best way for this church that way it's not one someone leading the church but it's God leading the church so I suggest to senior pastors listen to the other pastors leaders and the members more so that the church is not just guided by the senior pastors unless the senior pastor is totally like Jesus have all the revelation from God what to do and if he has a revelation all from God then the members also would have the same uh, revelation from God so we don't want to just control the members and then build up the unity of the whole church Ephesians 4 16 now look at this picture first that all these people building this church building together in unity so from whom Ephesians 4 16 from whom the whole body that's the body of Christ the church not the church building but all the members join and knit together join together knit together by what every joint supplies so everyone joined together like the joints in the in the in the body according to the effective working by which every part does its share so finger does the part the thumb does its part the other fingers do its part the wrist does its part the whole body does its part together that causes growth of the body for the edif edifying of itself in love so the body is built up in love so everyone comes to the church will feel love everyone who comes to the church will feel love now all this teaching I hope you you know I will send you I will send you the PowerPoint so you can review these teachings and you can watch the teachings again and then I hope we'll all review and then discuss with the members discuss with other people how we can do this better in the church that we all pay attention to these qualities of leaders and then learn from Jesus to obey the Father I'm amazed how Jesus said he did not do things out of his will let's look at John 5 19 I say to you the, uh, the son can do nothing of, of himself but what he sees the father do for forever whatever he does the son also does in like manner so the son Jesus Christ sees what the father do what the father do and then he would do what the father does and the son would do it in the same manner so Jesus saw what the father does and then he would do it and then in John 12 49 for I have not spoken to, on my own authority but the father who sent me gave me a command what I should say and what I should speak so it was God the Father who gave Jesus the command what he should say and speak and then Jesus would say it so it's amazing you know Father is God Son Jesus Christ is God the Holy Spirit is God but yet the Son and the Holy Spirit submit to the Father that Jesus submit to the Father that the Father says what is done what is to be said and then Jesus will follow that totally so we see this unity and this submission at the same time the father doesn't force the son to obey it's not by force it's by love that Jesus said he lives in the love of the father and here you see that Jesus praying here a picture of the Gethsemane prayer that he will say oh your will be done I submit to you only I submit to you your will be done what you want to be done I will do it 
Okay, as pastors, we want uh, leaders. We want to learn to handle problems. Handles problems, people with forgiveness. Colossians three, thirteen, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, just even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. So, as leaders, we need to learn to forgive. If a person is not willing to forgive, <clears throat> he cannot be a leader. As a pastor, we see the problems of practically every member. We can see the problem of every member. If we don't forgive them, we always say this person has this problem, that person has this problem. We all then we would despise them. But we'll say, I know they have the problem, but I still will respect them and honor them and bless them. <clears throat> And then handling problems of people don't argue. Second Timothy two fourteen remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord not to strive about words, to no profit, to the ruin of the hearer. That when we strive means to fight or argue about words. It doesn't bring any benefit. It will hurt the hearers. It will hurt the relationship. So we don't want to argue. When someone disagrees, then we say, okay, you think A, and I think B. Let's look at A and B. What are the pros and cons? What are the reasons for A? What are the reasons to B? And which way is biblical? Which way is the best way? And then if two persons cannot settle it, then we can ask a few persons together to find out. Um, so A and B, which one is more reasonable? So that it's not arguing, but... Uh, Analyzing all the facts, and then handling problem of people. It's very important to handle one to one, uh, not, ha uh, you know, if someone has a problem, as Matthew eighteen fifteen says, you know, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault before, between you and him alone. So just talk to him alone, first, instead of talking to everyone in the church and let everyone know about the problem. Talk to him alone, and then if he doesn't listen, then take with you one or two, and then if not, go to the church. But in the process, we do it with love, with acceptance, and listening. Why the person has a problem instead of accusing. And then when we handle problems of people, first we want to discern what the issues are by asking questions and listening. So we want to be able to ask questions and listen and. Uh, if someone says, uh, you know, uh, our family has problem, we fight and argue. You now some pastors would just say, go home and forgive each other, ask for forgiveness, and pray together and and love each other. Now, that they won't change because they have this problem. That's why they are are arguing or fighting. So we want to discern the problem, ask them questions. Uh, what happened? Tell me exactly what happened. And now, when I, if I do counseling, first I will ask them about the positive side. Do you see good things, positive things about the relationship? Do you think the relationship will grow stronger? Now, we will talk about that counseling later. But when we talk about to people, we always want to find out what the problem first before we tell them what to do. And then number two, listening and responding to the feelings and needs of the people involved. So if some workers have problem, we listen to them and we understand, yes, they are feeling unhappy. We don't say, submit now, repent and forgive each other. But we say, uh, okay, I hear that you have some comfort here. So tell me what happened. Uh, I want to understand your feelings and understand what happened. And in the family too, uh, when there are family problems, we want to listen to them and, and uh, find out what happened. And responding to the feeling, I know that you feel very unhappy now. Now we can say to both sides, I know that you, the husband, I know that you feel unhappy. And then we can say to the wife, I know that you feel unhappy. Both are unhappy. Both have experienced hurt from the other person. But still we can accept both. It doesn't mean one is right and the other is wrong. Both have, they both are, both are right in some way and both are wrong in some way. So we want to accept both feelings. And number three, invite them to analyze the problem. So invite them together. Find out the problem and think about how to resolve the problem by asking questions like, now these are examples, what are the issues? So what is the issue <coughs> here? <coughs> how can we 
<coughs> how can we resolve this? <coughs> and, uh, and this way of resolving the problem, is it workable? So we can ask questions to guide them instead of just teaching them, telling them what to do. And then number four, never accuse. We can ask, do you think this is right? Instead of accusing, this is wrong. We can say, do you think this is right? Okay, so this, this is very important to handle the problem with listening, with guidance, not with accusation and accepting people. Okay, now we come to another point, ministers, marriage and family. In Ephesians 5.21, first it says, submitting to one another in the fear of God. Now, when Paul talked about wives submit to your husband, first he said submit to each other. So husband and wife should submit to each other. Uh, now, of course, mainly the wife should submit to the husband. But the husband should also submit to the wife when the wife express some needs, some, uh, some areas that she need help and some areas that she's not happy that the husband should listen to her. I know a pastor who said that uh, his belief is that the wife always submit, no condition. And uh, the husband has to teach the wife to submit, command the wife to submit. What happened later is he undergo a divorce himself. The wife just couldn't accept that the relationship just doesn't work you know the bible says it's a loving relationship not just a commanding relationship so wife submit to your own husband as to the lord for the husband is the head of the wife and also christ is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body therefore just as the church is submit to christ so let the wives be to their hus own husband in everything and then husband, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. So the wife should submit to the husband and the husband should love the wives just as Christ loved the church and gave his life for her. So we want to learn to love the wife so that the family has a lot of love and then it's easier to submit. The family is not a place of ruling over the wife. It's not a place of forcing the wife to obey. It's a place that the husband loved the wife so much the wife is willing to submit. It's like us. Jesus loves us so much we are willing to submit to Jesus and obey Jesus and serve Jesus. That is the right attitude just as Christ loves the church. So we love our wife so that the wife would submit and then there is unity and we also want to listen to the wife also. Okay, and manage marriage and family. First is give time to the spouse and children to listen to them, care about them, support them, and to build up their, their spiritual life. Now, some pastors say, I'm too busy. I have no time for my family. Then they should put down some of the work. If we cannot manage the family well, we cannot manage the church well. So the first time, first thing is we need to put time in the family. Actually, the priority should be our relationship with God is the number one and then our relationship with our family members and then our relationship with the church so we should put this in priority so that we are not serving God and then the family is breaking down so we want to give time uh, and it's a place that we can learn to listen and and care for the wife and build up the relationship so it's very important that we learn to love the wife and listen to the wife and listen to the children and care about them to build up the loving relationship and number two beware that female treasure relationship much more than males and that's why you know god created wives to women to take care of the children and uh, because mothers have a natural love for the children and so female treasure relationship more to them is much more important for for men, it's most important uh, that what we want to do, our tasks, our jobs, uh, our calling. But for women, it's most important in the heart that they want to build up the relationship in the family. So they treasure the relationship. When they treasure the relationship, they also need the relationship. They need the wife love of the husband. So when a husband listens to the wife and responds to her needs and feelings, she will be 
more peaceful. She, you know, if we love our wives, then sh she will be very peaceful. And I love my wife, and whenever she has any problem with me, she'll always tell me, and then I will take care of that. And so she feels she can tell me anything. So there is peace. She feels very peaceful. She has no hidden frustration. Now, if the wife's issues are not resolved, she will have more emotions. Many husbands say, many pastors say, my wife is always angry, frustrated with me. She doesn't support me because he did not take care of the problem of the wife. He does not listen to the wife, doesn't care about her, doesn't love her. So the wife will have more and more frustration. And then she would not, it would be very hard for her to support the husband. So now we will talk about that uh, in a future session, more about husband and wife relationship. So we need to build up the relationship as a church worker, someone who serves God must learn to build up the family first. And manage, when we manage the marriage and the family, 1 Timothy 3, 4, a bishop must be the one who rules his own house well, having his children in submission with all reverence. So he must be able to rule his family well, the family is in, uh, in love. So first, willing to love as Christ loves the church and willing to give time to build up relationship. I have a lot of work to do, but I still would give time to my wife. And when I give time to my wife, my wife is very supportive and she gave me a lot of good ideas for my ministry. And she's very supportive and helpful in my ministry. She helps me a lot. And then third is willing to listen and respond to the needs and feelings and willing to say sorry and say thank you and treasure the spouse and the family and willing to resolve any problem. If there's any problem, we need to resolve so that the family can glorify God. Okay, now I think we'll stop here because uh, it's time already. And uh, so next time I'll talk about that. And so I've talked about some qualities of the ministers or people who want to serve God. When we want to raise up people to serve God, we want to uh, help them to build up qualities. And we want to look for people who have these qualities, who are willing to work on these qualities. People are not born with these qualities. They need to learn. They need to build up these qualities. So I hope that we we'll all build up this relation, uh, this quality ourselves and help people to build up this quality so that we are prepared for ministry for to glorify God. And may God bless you all. And I ask for blessings for all of you. And then if you have questions, if you have questions, you can send me WhatsApp. Uh, and then I can respond to you. I have a very short prayer. Oh Lord Jesus, help us to have this quality of loving you have a close relationship with you first before we serve you and we love you first before we learn to love other people and we want to listen to people we want to care about people we want to submit to people we want to bow down to the level bend down to the level to help them we want to be kind to people and we want to build up our family our marriage so that it glorifies god Everything we do, we say we glorify God. It's not just doing ministry, but having a life of Jesus, showing the life of Jesus, glorifying God in every way. And then people can see our life and then they will say, God is so good to see, it's so good to see this pastor having the life of Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus, because you are the one we want to learn from. We want to learn your life, lifestyle, your qualities, your kindness, your goodness, your patience, your kindness, your submission. We want to learn from you. Father, we thank you. Thank you for everything. You're so wonderful. We love you with all our heart. In Jesus' name we pray. So first, before we raise up people to serve God, we need to build up qualities. We pay attention to the qualities of our life and also the people who serve God with us, whether they need some help in changing their lives so that they will serve God with the qualities that God wants 